Welcome to Man360. I'm your host, Brian. Today we have two interviews that will focus on being a witness in a non-religious world. I sit down with offensive lineman Dalton Reisner of the Denver Broncos and the president of iHeartRadio in Honolulu, Hawaii, Scott Hogel. Then I endure another things Brian doesn't want to do with a trip to the eyebrow threader. If you don't know what that is, you'll be afraid of it after today. I'm glad you're here. Let's get started. Welcome to Man360. Dalton Reisner grew up in Wiggins, Colorado, and is now a starting offensive lineman for the Denver Broncos. It was refreshing to be around a professional athlete that was more concerned about telling about how much they love Jesus than talking about their exploits on the field. Dalton is the most down-to-earth person that you will ever meet, and we had a great conversation about what it takes to be a man of God in the world of professional football. Here's my conversation with Denver Bronco, Dalton Reisner. So Dalton, thank you for being on Man360. Yep, you're welcome, man. I'm happy to be here. Very excited. Yeah, I, I appreciate you and your Denver Bronco-ness uh, <laughs> playing professional, being a professional athlete. But I wanted to definitely talk to you a little bit about kind of the behind the scenes and just who you are as a man. And uh, for our viewers to be able to hear that and see that I think is really important. So can you talk a little bit about just your faith journey and just coming to Jesus? Yeah, of course, man. Well, first, thanks for having me on. This is what it's all about. You know, I, being able to play in the NFL, that's a dream come true. But at the same time, you know, being able to use my platform to talk about Jesus and be a role model for others, mm -hmm. that's what it's all about. Being able to be here today and talk about Jesus with you, man, that, I, I love being able to do that. So thank you so much. Um, my faith journey started way back to when I can even remember. I had two great parents that, you know, always had me going to Sunday school, always had me going to church and youth group. And, you know, I had some motives for youth group. You know, for every Bible verse we memorized, we got a pizza. So my, my love for food started off pretty quick <laughs> That's awesome. um, in, in that respect. Um, but man, I, I did all those things, right? I was baptized. I believed in Jesus Christ with all my heart. I had great parents that yeah. introduced me to who that was at a young age and, and what my life could look like if I did follow him. And that, I was so grateful for that. But I felt like I really didn't know who Jesus was. I didn't take time to open the Bible and really just talk to Jesus or really talk to Jesus on my own. I just felt like I was checking off the list. Mm. And when I got to college, you know, in college, I feel like we're all trying to find ourselves and figure out who is Dalton Reisner? Who am I going to be? What do I want to do in life? And I met a couple great mentors, one by the name of Morgan Burns. Morgan Burns lived in the dorms for all five years. I remember asking him a question, Morgan, why do you still live in the freshman dorms? I can't wait to get out of here. And he said, man, I'm staying in here for five years because you freshmen that come in, that's, that's what you guys need help with the most wow. is when you first show up. Yeah. And that's when a lot of you guys lose your way, lose your relationship with Jesus because you're around new people and peer pressure and mom and dad aren't there to tell you what you can and can't do. And when I, saw, when I heard him say that, that was the start of me looking at Morgan as such a great mentor. Yeah. Uh, we go throughout that first year of college, and he teaches me a lot about my faith. One thing that he taught me is, I said, Morgan, you're always talking about Jesus speaking to you. I feel like the world talks about Jesus speaking to them a lot. And I said, I've never heard a voice in my ear. I've never heard someone mm. tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. And he, he encouraged me to start, he asked me, do you read the Bible? you get in the Bible and read? I'm like, well, I read verses or memorize them. He's like, take some time to open the Bible and just try to get to know Jesus. I started to do that. It was remarkable through the good and the bad. No matter when I seek the Lord, he always found me. Whether That's it was, awesome. I could flip the Bible. I just practiced it almost. It wasn't a test by any means, but some days I just grabbed the Bible and open it. I'm like, how is he going to speak to me today? And I, he would just find ways to speak That's to awesome. me. And I just thought it was remarkable, man. So Morgan taught me so much. He ended up getting uh, an invite to go to Titans football camp for the uh, NFL and yeah. he shows up to camp and he made the team which is unheard of from wow. a mini camp invite. Yeah. Morgan Burns was the quickest person in the NFL ever to retire. They offered him wow. a contract to be a part of the 50 man, three man roster and play in the NFL. Morgan said, I'm sorry, I'm gonna have to polite, politely uh, decline. I actually just wanna do this to prove to myself that I could do it because this isn't my calling. I wanna be a missionary. Wow. So got the call to be an NFL player, <laughs> wow. said thank you, but no thank you, I'm done. I'm gonna go be a missionary. So wow. um, long story short, he played such a huge role for me in college. Yeah. Just being a great mentor and a man of faith and showed me what it looked like. Yep. 
And as soon as he did that, I started to get to know Jesus, and that's where my faith blossomed, and I started having love for helping mm-hmm. others, and oh my gosh, this is who Dalton is. This is the life that I want to live, yeah. and I could talk for more hours about yeah. it, but that's where it kind of bloomed out. That's awesome. So as a professional athlete, um, you know, what do you think are some of maybe the challenges as a, being a Christian in that environment? You know, what do you feel like some of the general challenges are Um, You know, I think there's some maybe obvious things from people from the outside, but you're in the system, um, you know, and I know that you're looked at maybe more as just a commodity, you know, to the people around you, which is true, you know, in the NFL and different sports and professional athlete in the athletic realm. But what do you feel like are some of those challenges for just living for Jesus? Yeah, man, there's multiple challenges in the NFL when you follow Jesus Christ. And especially in my circumstance, I love being outspoken about that. I'd be remiss if I had an NFL platform with millions of kids that look up to me and whatever mm-hmm. it is, maybe thousands, and, and I didn't use that platform to talk about Jesus instead of talking about a new car or a new house. Like that opportunity for me is huge. Right. I look myself in the mirror and I say, I'm six foot five, 300 pounds. I didn't work hard for that. I might've worked hard eating mama's pancakes growing up, but I did or not Memorizing work. Bible verses yes, and getting free yes, pieces. Yes, <laughs> right? But I didn't work hard to be six foot five. The Lord blessed me with that. I yeah. think he wants me to do something with that. So yeah. let me use this platform to do good for other people. And yeah. when you're in the NFL, a, a lot of eyes are on you. So when you are outspoken about being a Christian and you take so much, you know, you take so much, so much pride in being a Christian, mm-hmm that you realize how many people are watching you. Whatever you say, whenever you go out, no matter what you do, eyes are on you. So you never want to do something that's out of character. You never want to do something that makes people view you like, wow, he's a Christian and he does that. But one thing that I think is important to remember, and I was talking to you about it earlier, is that I'm just a man. You look at guys in the NFL, and yes, it's great to have fans and people that look up to us, but we are human. I am just a man. That is it. Yeah. And you might see someone on TV and think, oh my gosh, how cool it would be to meet them. But me and you are just men of faith right now talking. Yeah. And I think that's what's important to remember, especially in the NFL. But you, you have players that you're concerned, do my teammates believe in this? Yeah. Are my teammates okay if I pray? Right. Are they okay if I ask them to pray? In the NFL, you're, it's, the NFL stands for not for long. And as an NFL athlete, you want to play in the NFL for as long as possible. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be real honest with you here. Sometimes it comes to my attention in my head, is it in my best interest to be so outspoken about my faith whenever I'm unsure if my boss is okay with that? Mm. Maybe my boss wants it to be all about football, and I have no idea. I I would like to think that all everyone is okay with that, and it's okay to be outspoken about your faith, but that's another obstacle in the NFL that you have to think about, because this isn't college, you got a scholarship and you're there forever. This is the NFL. You know, you could be gone in a matter of week. I could get the call today. Mm-hmm. So being outspoken about your faith and following Jesus, there's definitely some roadblocks and obstacles along the way while yeah. being in the NFL, yeah. but nothing that you and Jesus can't overcome, nothing right. that I haven't so far. And it sounds like, too, for you, you know, it's a calling for you and not just an athletic career yeah. and recognizing and realizing, too, that just the, the length and scope of that, it's like if people don't know you're a Christian, but they just know you as a great athlete, that time could fade. But if they know you as a Christian mm-hmm. and you've built those inroads with people, that's where that really lasts. And I know too, the Reisner Up Foundation, I wanted you to share real quick about, about that program and what you're doing. Yeah, for sure, man. I've always loved helping people. You just spoke on it a little bit right there. I think identity is so huge. Yeah. I am not an NFL football player. I hope when you leave today, you say, man, that's a great man of God. And I hope to see him again because that's what matters. Right. And I want to be remembered as someone that uh, walks with God. And whenever I'm done playing football, I'm going to be a follower of Jesus. I'm not going to be right. worried about it. Right. So with the foundation, I just love doing so much good, man. So my foundation is a way for me to give back to other people with my platform. Mm-hmm. I was doing so much community service in college that I had the opportunity to, hey, how am I going to bring this together? How can I empower the world to see what I'm doing and get other people to do the same thing? Yeah. So whether it's with Special Olympics or with kids that have cancer or building a new home here in Colorado, we just want to do good. And that's yeah. what the foundation's about. First Peter 4 tends the verse, uh, each of you should use whatever gift you have received as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. We each were given a gift. You were given a gift. I can see it already today. Yeah. I was given a gift. How can we use that to glorify God? Dalton, thank you for being on Man360. And uh, we'll be praying for you when we see you, not to get hurt as well. Thank you, And for your conditioning and all those things, and just for that you can just let Jesus shine through you. I will. I'll continue to do that. I promise, man. That's one thing that's most important to me is my relationship with Jesus. And that's something I'll never fall through with, man. So thank you so much. Pleasure being on here. Thank you. When we were in Florida, I took my brother-in-law Bodie with me to the eyebrow salon to get our eyebrows threaded. When we got done with the procedure, I asked my lovely wife how often she got her eyebrows done. She said she had never had her eyebrows threaded, but thought it would be funny to see Bodie and I get this done. 
Here's my trip to the eyebrow salon in my least favorite segment, things Brian doesn't want to do. Hey, Bodie. Yeah, what's up? So, uh, we need to go get our eyebrows threaded. A what? Our eyebrows threaded. What is that? So, you know Yolanda likes to torch me with these things Brian doesn't want to do yeah. segments. So, uh, you're going to come with me and we're going to go get our eyebrows threaded. You're going to get your eyebrows threaded. No, we're going to get our eyebrows threaded. I don't even know what it is. We're going to leave right now. Come on, let's go. Come on, just leave your stuff. Let's go. So Bodie and I are here at the mall. We're gonna go see if we can get our eyebrows threaded. And uh, see, Yolanda wanted to do it before. Fluff them up for you there. I think they look great, actually. I mean, I actually have a uni I actually used to have a unibrow when I was in uh, high school and also college when Yolanda met me. We're gonna try to maybe find some pictures of that. So we're gonna go in here and see if we can uh, get our eyebrows threaded. All right, so I'm about ready to get my eyebrows threaded. I don't know why Yolanda gets me into this kind of stuff. But... <laughs> So this is not going to hurt. Mm. You hold it tight, no problem. Do my eyebrows look good? Yeah, very nice. Do you tell that to everybody? Mm. <laughs> yes. Hold tight, okay? Okay. Oh, my eye. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. I think my eye is watering, but I can't tell because my eyes closed. Oh. I thought it was better than that. Oh. Ah. Ah. I think my eye is watering. Pretty sure. No, no, no. My sir. nose is starting to water too. You are good and strong, man. I'm a little baby. No. This is fun to watch. I think I'm crying. Hey. Okay, literally my eye is watering. <laughs> oh, some manly tears. <laughs> okay. Yeah, tell me, show me where. Okay. Yes. Like this. Very nice. Yeah. So, is it help if I pull my fill it tighter? Mm-hmm. Pull tight is good. Okay. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. My eyes are watering. Just watch. Oh my gosh! So how long have you how long have you been doing this? Two or three weeks is good for you. Two or three weeks? Mm -hmm. You've been doing this for two or three weeks? Mm -hmm. Oh. Just a minute. Okay. Just a minute. So you're just using a thread. I am working here 12 years ago here. 10 years ago, 12. okay. 12. 12. Whew. Yeah. Okay. I thought you said you only worked here for three years yeah, and you're working on my eyes. That's how long you get it in between. Oh, yeah. I, every, it'll probably be every, every 12 or 13 years probably. <laughs> Look at my eyes, I'm crying. I love eyebrow pulls. It looks really good. <laughs> that was excellent. Okay, Bo, you're next. That was good. Oh. Time to go. Okay. Let's see. Can we just pretend? No. Oh. Retail therapy. Woo! Retail therapy. It's good. Okay. That's good. Okay, Chief, Master Chief. Many, many. Oh, she took too much off. <laughs> I trust you. Bottom and top. Okay. Bottom and top, top of right yeah. here. And hold tight. Yeah. And hold tight. Mm -hmm. Just a minute. Okay. Press tight. Okay. Ow! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I just broke the. <laughs> Bodie, even your eyebrows are tough. I mean, it looks way better. Oh. Oh. You, you notice it in college. 
I'm good. I wish I had a unibrow. I'm strong. I'm strong. <laughs> Buddy, what does it feel like? That feels, it, it feels First like. First time little bit feeling hard. It feels like. It looks like I slapped you on the eyebrow. Carpet and sandpaper all in one. <laughs> Oh, thank you. Gotta get the, the, oh. blood, the blood off your forehead. Thank you. <laughs> hey. Huh? Oh. Good. Ouch, Brian. Yeah. Whose idea was this? It was actually Yolanda's, as usual, for uh, things wow. Brian doesn't want to do. If your producer wasn't my sister. Ah. Seriously. Ow. The top side is not hard. Yes, fine. not hard. No, I'm no, fine. Why am I sweating? I don't know, I'm like sweating. Too. Yeah, I'm like, hey, what just happened? <laughs> okay. Perfect. Okay, you quit. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. All right. So, Bodie and I just got our eyebrows threaded. This was amazing. Eyebrows place in Seminole, or uh, sorry, Tyrone Mall here in Florida. And um, yes, Bodie, how, did, how was your experience? Thank you. <laughs> His experience was thank you. You wouldn't think that iHeartMedia would be a place that a Christian could survive and even thrive as a top-level executive. Scott Hogel is an example of someone God has placed as a Daniel or Joseph to shine the light of Jesus in the most unsuspecting of places and has an incredible testimony about God's healing power in his life. Here is my amazing and insightful interview with the president of iHeartMedia in Honolulu, Hawaii, Scott Hogel. So Scott, thank you for being on Man360. Thank you for having me. Yes, so I know that I, I, I'm gonna love, I'm really going to enjoy this conversation, I know, because you are in ministry, but not in the way that maybe people would think, truly yeah. think in the word ministry is. So can you share a little bit about who you are, what you do? Sure, so I, you know, I guess the short introduction is I'm pastor and president all at the same time. So I'm a teaching pastor at New Hope Oahu in Hawaii, but I'm also the president of iHeartRadio in Honolulu, Hawaii. So I have a dual calling, which, by the way, for those of you listening, 99.9% .9 of all of you will have a similar calling to me. And mm -hmm. what I mean by that is that most people are not called to full-time vocational paid ministry, right. which means if you're in Christ, you have a calling in Christ, but you're probably going to work in the marketplace too. Right. So talk to me a little bit about how you got in that. We talk a lot off camera sure. about lanes yep. and knowing your lane and knowing where God's called you. How do you feel like or where do you feel like that calling began with what you're doing now? That's a great question. Um, the genesis happened, I guess, in my early 20s. Mm -hmm. And I, I think finding your calling, your lane is very important because when you know what to say yes to, you know what to say no to. I was in my early 20s and... My uncle was in secular broadcasting, coming out and going into Christian broadcasting, and he would become my first mentor. I was in Christian broadcasting and then would leave and go into secular broadcasting. And you might ask why. Mm -hmm. For some reason, working in Christian paid vocational ministry full-time just didn't work with me. I worked in the church. I, yeah. I served like a lot of people as a volunteer. Yeah. I went through two years of Breen Bible School. Um, so, but my calling became to the secular marketplace hmm. and I discovered that early on because there's a place you feel you belong and a place you don't and you yeah. know the difference. Right, yeah. right. So can you talk a little bit about how you operate inside of the four walls really of iHeartRadio as a Christian? Sure. So, you know, um, as a minister, I've been preaching the gospel for 30 years and I know how to do that without preaching the gospel. Right. Without using words. Without using words. I mean, Christ is in me, right? Yeah. And you don't need a biblical reference to be able to model Christ. Right. Um, that being said, there is an ache in a hole in everybody's heart that longs for God. Mm. And I think that when you model Christ and you teach biblical principles, even if you don't say they're from the Bible, yeah. that, that resonates with people because like Romans chapter 1 says, God's inside of us. And we know the difference between right and wrong. Right. We hear him. Even those who are lost can feel the knock at the door. So yeah. when somebody speaks with the voice of Christ, I think that Christ in them hears that. Yeah, that authority. And I know, too, that um, you, know, you were mentioning something about when we were talking about how you present or place yourself in front of people mm -hmm. um, where you're helping them either to understand and recognize something in fear 
or in being able to, to fear it. Can you share a little bit about that? You were talking about the, to some of the iHeartRadio yeah. people, this situation that you developed and helped them, and you weren't trying to be ultra godly, but it actually had a godly outcome to it. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of times that you're going to be in the secular marketplace and you're going to be put in a position to do something you know you just can't be a part of. Mm -hmm. And at the time, I felt like God brought me to the book of Daniel to read the book of Daniel. And I, here's something I can promise you. In your lane of calling, God will speak to you more in that lane and in that profession than any other lane that you'll have. Mm -hmm. you'll, you'll be intuitive in your lane of calling, but you'll hear God's voice more. That's how you know you're in the right lane. Yeah. And God would lead me to the book of Daniel because every problem that arises in your lane of calling, there's a divine answer to. Right. And I would read the book of Daniel, and as I would read through the book of Daniel, I would start to hear, as you called the whisper, I would hear the whisper and the wisdom of God, and God would give me very specific strategies mm -hmm. in terms of how to navigate and walk through yeah. the crisis of conscience I was now facing. Because, you know, there's things as Christian men that are non-negotiable. Right. That you just won't do. Right. There, and, 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 and all those things have to be anti-biblical, right? Anything that's anti-biblical, you cannot do. Anything right. apart from faith is sin. Right. So God would lead me on how to walk through that. Mm -hmm. And victoriously, it would happen. And sometimes there are secret strategies. Yeah. Sometimes the whispers are meant to just be a whisper because the stakes are high. It can be your career. Yeah. It can be a relationship at work mm -hmm. with your supervisor. So... But I believe every answer we encounter in the marketplace, God's got a divine answer to every problem we face. Yeah, it's interesting, too, because I think about how God places people, especially in just the marketplace ministry, really is what we call it. We've interacted mm -hmm. with a lot of people through what we do and just talking about them, about what they do outside of church ministry. But it's interesting about how the blessing comes on those companies, mm. not because yes. of what they're doing, yes. but because of who God places in those companies to be the witnesses. I love that. And I really believe, too, that, um, you know, and Yolanda and I were talking about this, that it's almost, it's so important that we are praying yes. for those people that are not in full-time, quote-unquote, church ministry, but in full-time marketplace ministry. Because I really believe, too, that you're putting it and you're, you're building that and you're providing an opportunity for hunger to be met with people that don't know Christ and maybe yes. people that would never walk and step inside of a church. Yes. Um, and that's really where you live and, and exist in your life. Absolutely. And it, what you said, Brian, just resonates with me so much that a blessing comes upon the business where the man or the woman of Christ works. It's yeah. right out of Joseph in Genesis, right? Exactly. It's Joseph's story. Yep. And the scripture says, and God blessed the household of Potiphar for Joseph's sake. Right. So when you're in your lane of calling, and by the way, let me just remind you, those of you watching online, Joseph was a slave. Mm -hmm. So if God can do this with a slave, how much more so you? Right. So, so God wants us to be able to jet out, to actually do well and succeed. Yeah. So the favor of man can come upon us, not just the favor of God. Right. As that happens, our influence grows, yep. which means our voice gets louder, it expands, yep. and creates a platform for Christ. And I've always believed this. Your work is your worship. Your position is your pulpit. Hmm. And it's within your lane of assignment that God has called you. Yeah. Do you know what your lane is today? Yeah. And even that you're, it's important that you're, as you get more influence and you're more, have more accolades that the world, they can't quantify that. And I feel like sometimes from even people that are Christians, they get caught up in the rat race, so to speak, of things yes. and accolades and that because they don't have that balance of their fruit and their gifts as well. Yes. And that they have to increase those fruit, the fruit in their life and spending that time with God actually needs to increase yes. and not I'm getting more busy and I'm more, I have more money and I have more responsibilities. If that's not increasing too, you know, we've seen that obviously many times in ministry and in just marketplace ministry where you get sucked into that vortex and you lose yes. who you are inside of that. So yeah, we're going to say Scott. You do. So I, you know, you said the word fruit and I want to key in on that, right? The yeah. fr there's fruits of the spirit, right? Which is kind of a byproduct of the tree. Yeah. I want to talk about fruits of the calling if I can for a mm. minute. Yeah. Because a lot of times we associate our job with our purpose or our calling and mm -hmm. that's not it. Right. But there is a fragrance, I would almost say. There's a feeling to, how do you know you're in your lane of assignment? Yeah. So there's an invisible map I believe God puts on all of our hearts. And when you're doing what you're called to do, yeah. there's a few ex things that you experience. You experience a sense of timelessness. You lose track of time. Right. Because you're in the spirit. Right. There's a sense of tirelessness 
where other people poop out, you just keep going. Right. You have this extra extraordinary um, dose of adrenaline or energy that just drives you that doesn't drive other people, which then, of course, leads to the favor of men and success in the marketplace. Right, right. Right? So there, there's, there's a lot of evidences of how do you belong doing what you're doing. In fact, because we're talking about it, I want to read you a quote. Yeah. I keep this on my phone. This is from an old movie, Chariots of Fire. Oh, I love that movie. But Eric Lydell said this. He was a missionary to China, but he was a gold and bronze winner. This is what he said. I believe God made me for a purpose, but he also made me fast. And when I run, I feel the pleasure of the Lord. So mm -hmm. I would ask you this. Those of you watching online, what do you feel the pleasure of the Lord? Mm -hmm. What are you doing when you're feeling the pleasure of God? Yeah. That's a clue to what your lane of calling is. Yep. And... Whatever that is, that's what you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. But calling comes to through people and in places. Right. And when you're where you're supposed to be, you can feel it. When you're not, you can kind of feel that. <laughs> you know, too. you feel that too. Right. In stressful ways. Right. Well, Scott, can you pray for our viewers? I would and, love to. Uh, you know, just pray that God just really opens up the right and, like you were saying, too, find that lane that you're supposed to be in. Not be nervous about anybody else's lane. Yes. And operate in that. If it's full-time ministry, that's great. But also marketplace ministry. It could just be that they're just being excellent at home with their families and those yes. things too, but specifically in, in just what you feel like God puts on your heart. So Lord, I just, uh, we just, we just, we just put our hands through time and space and lay our hands in the spirit on everybody listening yes, with God. the sound of my voice, Lord. And we just declare your favor. Mm -hmm. We declare your presence. We declare your anointing. And Lord, I pray that everybody that is listening in the season that they're in, that you would meet them and Lord, that they would discover your purpose. Mm -hmm in season. Mm -hmm. What is the assignment? What is the calling? May they be like David, that they fulfilled your purposes in their generation. So they don't just receive well done, good and faithful servant, mm -hmm. that they are faithful, Lord, but they discovered your purposes in every season of their life. Yeah. So Lord, for the season they're in, make them prosperous and successful, and then give them a heads up as the seasons change. Yes, God. And may their, your hand just be upon them as they walk through the stages of life in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Scott, thank you for being on Man360. Oh, Appreciate your conversation. And thank you. Just, uh, we just pray for you, continue to pray for you and the influence that you have. And Appreciate it. That you'll have the surgical wisdom to know how oh. to tack in, in the industry that you're in and that, that you. God will give you influence. From your mouth to God's ears. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Let's do our 360 degree review from today's program. It's exciting to hear from men like Dalton and Scott who are shining the light of Jesus to everyone around them and having great success in each of their platforms. To see an online only healing testimony from Scott, go to the additional content page of man360.tv. This testimony will encourage you to believe God for anything. I love this program because it speaks to a majority of you as viewers, people who go to church and then have to navigate the dark world and culture that's all around looking for opportunities to be the light of Jesus. I hope this program encouraged you to see the impact you can have when you put a relationship with Jesus first and expect Him to open doors to witness while being excellent at the talent He's given you. My eyebrows are still hurting from our segment, Things Brian Doesn't Want to Do, and my trip to the salon. Having fun in life is also an expression of the joy of Christ in us as much as preaching to the lost world around us. Keep looking for ways to have fun. Man360 is dedicated to helping you be complete in every way through Christ mentally, physically, and spiritually. I hope you enjoyed the program. For more information about us or to connect with us online, check out our website, Facebook, and Instagram, and we'll see you next week right here on Man360.